I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture for my professional responsibility class about ABA Model Rule 2.1. This is a fairly lightly tested rule when it comes to the MPRE, and as we're going to see, parts of this rule seem to overlap with other rules we've already studied. There's only one section of the rule. Uh, there's no A, B, C, D is sections, but there are some points in the comments that are worth talking about. On the other hand, this rule is really useful in practice because not as a lawyer, you're not just an advocate for a client's cause and you're not just achieving things for a client, but you're also an advisor. And so this rule is really about giving advice and counsel to the client that's more than just looking up an answer in a book and telling them what it says. And so here's the rule. In representing a client, a lawyer shall exercise independent professional judgment and render candid advice. Now notice that we have two parts of this sentence. First is exercising independent professional judgment. We've seen that before in some of our rules, like 1.8, when someone else is paying your fees besides the client, they're not supposed to control your decision making. 5.4, rule 5.4 talks about um, managers or lenders and owners of your firm not interfering, especially if they're not lawyers, uh, with your independent professional judgment about whether to settle a case or how to handle a case or how to pursue a claim, what motions to file, and so forth. The second part of this is candid legal advice. And to some extent, this overlaps with Model Rule 1.4, which is about communicating with the client enough that they can make uh, decisions. But here, we're maybe a little concerned that a difficult client is interfering with your professional judgment because you're trying to avoid unpleasant confrontations with that client. Let's take a, a, a further look at the rest of the rule. In rendering advice, a lawyer may refer not only to law, but to other considerations such as moral, economic, social, and political factors that may be relevant to the client's situation. So uh, there's kind of two sides to this. The first is it's always okay to talk to the client about more than just the law answer, just who's going to win or what is the legal rule about this. Secondly, don't hide behind that as if that were the rule when you're a lawyer. In other words, there are, sometimes lawyers are, will try to say, it's not my job to tell my client what the, the thing they're doing is wrong, that they're in the wrong, or what the right thing to do is, or to warn them that uh, things could backfire or have personal consequences or consequences for their family members and so forth. Well, it's always okay to tell your client that. It's always okay in addition to talking to your client about what their legal rights are or potential liabilities to say, but there are other considerations, cost, your family, your professional reputation, um, uh, you know, moral considerations like you can do this legally, but is it the right thing to do? And uh, this may sound a little strange, but sometimes for your client, they're trying so hard when they're talking to you as a lawyer to follow this, the information about the law and understand the legal system that it might not be immediately evident to them the way it is to you that there's a, not, a lot of non-legal consequences of our legal activities. And sometimes you have to explain that to the client. So let's look at the comments. Comment one, a client is entitled to straightforward advice expressing the lawyer's honest assessment. Legal advice often involves unpleasant facts and alternatives that a client may be disinclined to confront. And so sometimes you have to be the bearer of bad news. You may find yourself saying to the client things like, don't shoot the messenger. And um, it can be very difficult. It's very, it, when you're in practice, if you have a client who has an explosive temper, who yells and screams every time at anybody who tells them something they don't want to hear or who cries uncontrollably, um, it's very awkward to be on the phone with someone who's bawling uh, their eyes out or crying uncontrollably because you told them we lost the case or it's going to be much more expensive or we're, uh, the other side filed a counterclaim or is going to ask for attorney's fees if they prevail and so forth. Some people are uh, really take bad news hard and 
part of the job as a lawyer is having sometimes being the bearer of bad news and having unpleasant conversations, even with your clients. Comment one continues in presenting advice. A lawyer endeavors to sustain the client's morale and may put advice in as acceptable a form as honesty permits. Even so, a lawyer should not be deterred from giving candid advice by the prospect that the advice will be unpalatable to the client. I think that's pretty straightforward, but again, we have this problem that it can be very tempting. It's human nature to procrastinate uh, confrontations and unpleasant conversations with clients. And so you know you have to tell the client something and that this client's really unpleasant when you give them bad news. And so you decide to put it off until the end of the day and then until the next day, until the end of that day, before you know it, a week has gone by and you really haven't touched base with your client and told them something that they need to know. And so this rule says it, you have to like suck it up as a lawyer sometimes and tell your client things that they don't want to hear it can be part of your ethical duty okay comment two talks about another way that lawyers avoid or deflect in these situations advice couched in narrow legal terms may be of little value to a client especially where practical considerations such as cost or effects on other people are predominant Purely technical legal advice, therefore, can sometimes be inadequate. Think about a doctor who doesn't want to tell their patient that they're dying. So the doctor decides to give them a little uh, verbal lesson in cell biology or enzymes and uh, processes in the body or something like that. And what the doctor is really saying when they talk about cell mitosis is you have three months to live, but the doctor doesn't want to say that. So they give them a little science lesson that the person doesn't understand. And the doctor walks away thinking, well, I technically told them the truth, but you also kind of did the cowardly thing. And lawyers do this too. Lawyers will uh, tell a client, well, the judge I uh, granted the other side's 12B6 motion, which means we just lost our case. Our case was dismissed. That's very bad news. If the judge granted the other side's 12B6 motion, your client didn't understand. You technically told them the truth, but it was not helpful information. And that's what this comment is really talking about. Some lawyers will uh, kind of reflexively or maybe even subconsciously start using legal jargon and technical terms and things like that to try to avoid an emotional outburst from the client or having to be the bearer of bad news. And ultimately, they're not really being the bearer of any news. Okay, it is proper for a lawyer to refer to relevant moral and ethical considerations in giving advice. Although a lawyer is not a moral advisor as such, moral and ethical considerations impinge upon most legal questions and may decisively influence how the law will be applied. It's always okay to tell your client, you can do that, but you're kind of being a jerk, right? Or why would you do that to someone, even though you might win the case, why would you do this? Or you have a legal right to do that, but think about the kind of person you're being or the effects it's going to have, that that will have on other people. Now, you're not asked to be their pastor or personal ethical advisor or something like that, but part of giving legal advice to people is putting it in the larger context. And most legal questions involve financial costs and repercussions and things that will affect people's interpersonal relationships, um, things that will take up a lot of people's time and emotional energy. And they may not understand that, and it, it may be part of your job to explain it to them. Now, some clients don't need that. A client may expressly or impliedly ask the lawyer for purely technical advice. And when such a request is made by a client experienced in legal matters, the lawyer may accept it at face value. This is comment three. Who are we talking about here? Um, definitely, if you are giving legal advice to another lawyer and, and like, let's say an in-house legal counsel at a corporation calls you because you have expertise in an area, you specialize in an area, they're outsourcing litigation to you something like that and they already know the context and the other issues involved they're looking to you almost as a reference or to um, just give give them purely technical advice and if that's clear then that is okay that that's what they want on the other hand there are also unsophisticated clients non-lawyers and maybe you're the first lawyer they've ever hired 
they don't really understand what's going on or all of the implications of these legal processes for people's personal lives. And so you may have a responsibility to um, include advice that uh, is more than strictly legal considerations. And so in other words, you could be neglecting your duty to a client, even though you're telling them technically what the law is or what the precedent is or who's going to win or lose a case, but you're not really explaining to them that this is going to ruin their family or um, ruin their reputation or could backfire or create a counterclaim uh, or something like that involve a lot of like unintended consequences and costs. And if they don't understand that, it's probably on you to explain it. Okay, what about unsolicited advice? Well, in general, you're not expected to give a client advice until they ask for it. But there are times when a client's proposed course of action will result in substantial adverse legal consequences, and then there could be a duty, right? If you see a, a impending catastrophe that the client is heading towards, and they don't understand it because they're not a lawyer or they don't know what you know about the law, then maybe you need to take the initiative and bring something up. So maybe they hired you to do their residential real estate closing on when they're buying a home and that's all they hired you to do. They didn't ask you about advice about their investments or other things. But in the process of doing that, you hear some things or notice some things and realize this client has a really big legal problem that they're oblivious to. And so in that kind of case, you may have an obligation to tell the client about it. But normally, normally your duty is just when the client asks. Okay, in litigation, we have uh, some special concerns. And so comment five talks about when a matter is likely to involve litigation, it may be necessary under rule 1.4, that was our duty to communicate, to inform the client of forms of dispute resolution that might constitute reasonable alternatives to litigation. This suggests here in comment five that there could be an ethical duty to tell your client about um, our arbitration or mediation as a way to minimize costs and inconvenience and um, headaches and things like that or other but cross claims and so forth to, to suggest it even though they came to you expecting to litigate. And so you may have a duty to talk to them about some of those other things. We're almost done, I promise. A lawyer ordinarily has no duty to initiate investigation of a client's affairs or give advice that the client has indicated is unwanted, but a lawyer may initiate advice to a client when doing so appears to be in the client's interest. So it's never going to be a violation of the rule that you warned the client about something. You can't be disciplined for telling the client uh, legal advice that they maybe didn't ask for, or even told you, I don't wanna hear it, if you are genuinely looking out for the client's interests and trying to warn them about something. Also keep in mind that you don't have a duty, if a client comes to you to do their real estate closing or draft their will, you don't have a duty to look into all of their personal and financial and legal affairs about everything else. They didn't hire you necessarily to do a complete legal audit of their whole life. So don't assume that you have to do that. But if in handling the matter that they've entrusted to you, you come, it becomes obvious that there's this other looming legal issue, you may have to inquire. You may have to do a little more investigation so that you can warn your client um, of a catastrophe. Okay, here's a review question to see if you've been paying attention. Is it permissible for an attorney to suggest to a client that the client forfeit a legal claim or not seek to enforce a legal right due to countervailing moral, financial, or family concerns? A, yes, a lawyer can balance narrow legal advice with other considerations. Or B, no, a lawyer may not advise a client to do something that might go against the client's legal interests. Hopefully you know the answer to that. If you don't or you're not sure, you might not have been paying attention and should probably rewatch the video. Okay, that concludes our video about ABA Model Rule 2.1.